I got a truly cursed fashion aesthetic for you, 1920s clothing, and I mean not the flapper dress specifically but a whole variety that's close to the real deal as humanly possible, but done in the style of the Roar XT emo slash scene kid culture aesthetic from the 2000s, and calling it the Roaring Twenties. Ah, uh, you ask and I deliver. Now, this is a topic that is... Am I in the center of the frame? Now, this is a topic that is especially close to my heart because back when I was in my early teens, that was that was all I wanted to be. Like, that was who I wanted to be. I, I wanted to have big hair and I wanted to have bangs and I wanted to have the black panda-like makeup and to just be cool, you know? I feel like, in a way, I am sort of reliving that dream right now. Like, all of the things that I couldn't afford or like didn't didn't really do. I have a chance to do it now. <laughs> it's emotional for sure. So I know there are differences between emo and scene styles and I have done significant historical research as always and I think the style I'm going for with this outfit is more scene actually. Like it fits more the description of the scene style and subculture. So, so as a base of my 1927 that's 2007 mashup, I wanted a dress that will allow me will allow me. Will, I wanted a dress that will allow me to play with like color contrast and different prints. So I was looking for a 1920s dress, an authentic 1920s dress design to turn into an emo slash scene thing. And I also vividly remember being obsessed with like hot pink so I wanted some hot pink trimming and when it comes to prints one of the most common prints I remember from that time was the checkerboard print but I also remember it was more common in accessories rather than clothing like maybe some pieces of clothing but I don't remember anyone wearing like a full-on checkerboard outfit so I left that and for the sleeves I went for the skull print and I was trying to find this particular style of skulls which was like the cutesy skulls. They had like bows and cute eyes and like the soft teeth. I don't know how to describe it, but there was this particular particular style of skulls that were like super in back then, but I couldn't really find any print that came close to that, so I just settled on like any skull print I could find that was that could be delivered fast because I was running out of time. <laughs> Dress design aside, I feel like all the emo and scene styles of the late 2000s were all about accessorizing, were all about like putting as much stuff on yourself as you can. <laughs> like that's how I remember it at least. So not gonna lie, the fact that I set up memberships for this channel and that you can support me and I decided to dedicate all those funds to like video funds specifically to make videos, it all made me go a little overboard maybe. I don't know, maybe not, um, but I had a lot of fun. So anyway, here's me un unboxing a pile of emo slash scene goodies that I found online. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, welcome to my emo unboxing video. To be fair, this was a massive nostalgic journey throughout all, the, all of the trends that I loved when I was like 14. Oh, I didn't iron my shirt, but I couldn't get because I was a well-behaved child. Um, so if anyone can relate, smash the like button. So I already unboxed two things because I couldn't wait and I was really excited. The first one is... <laughs> Wait, I actually did not expect that. Okay, so I got those like pink hair extensions that everyone would wear in those like puffy hair, but I did not expect some uh, glitter in it. Come on. I really admire people that are like patient enough to actually unbox things instead of like ripping them apart to see what's inside. Cannot relate. Bruh. Oh my god, they have like glittery stars on them. This is what dreams are made of. 2008 me would kill for this. It looks like My Little Pony hair, you know? Like who wouldn't want that in their hair? By the way, um, I didn't do my hair today, so you're welcome. Anyway, the, the second thing I have is the only fabric I have so far for the dress, which is... It's okay. I think like I might have worn this at some point in my life. I was thinking about like painting some pink bows on to make it more historically accurate, but I ain't nobody got time for that. I'm not doing that. Moving on. This is so exciting. I feel like I got a bunch of Christmas gifts. I think these are going to be shoelaces. Yeah, boy. Okay. <gasps> 
that's not the right color. Bruh, that is not the right color. So for the shoes, I originally wanted to use like 20 style shoes that I could not find for the life of me. It, it's been a year since I last saw them, I think. I have no idea where they are. I must say, like, I came up with a pretty clever idea, if I do say so myself, because <laughs> back in 2008, okay, story time, back in 2008, me and my friend were in the mountains together with our families, because we were young, obviously, and I remember we saw these, like, really tall sneakers, like, Converse style shoes, and we were like, okay, we're both getting them. So then our great idea was to buy two sets of neon shoelaces like contrasting colors and then swap so like each one of us would have two different shoelaces and I mean it rocked we felt like the hottest shit alive that was like the pinnacle of our style I don't think style wise I don't think either of us has ever topped that experience so so I remember that I have these shoes that are I think they're like Edwardian but they might work for early 20s as well and they are laced in front so I mean I had to do it right it's it's not the right shade like the green might do but the yellow is just like that's not as cool as I was hoping for so so I might look for another shoelace <laughs> why am I so excited Mm, yum. Okay, this is a necklace and it's actually kind of cool. So it's like this lock with the wire, barbed wire. It's not like super emo. The style I was, I was going for when I was like 13, 14 was sort of like emo slash scene, but make it cute, you know? Like a lot of those trends were like not 100% super dark punkish. But they were like, I used to have like the razor blades earrings, except they were pink and they had a heart-shaped hole in the middle. So it was kind of like a mix. Okay. <laughs> okay, hear me out. I know it looks terrible. So I got, <laughs> I got this wig and I mean, it's awful. It was like $2, but with the right headwear, like with a bandana or something, it might work. I don't know. It's not as shiny as I thought, so that's good. Oh, it is. Just kidding. It looks like it wants to speak to your manager. We'll see if it works. You know, like there are probably some ways to style my own hair to look more emo than it already does, but... Oh, this, I know what that is. I'm really excited about it because I wanted to have one, but again, it did not happen. I think, I don't think I had one. So this is pretty iconic, not gonna lie. Do you know what that is? Oh my god, okay, every cool girl in 2007 wanted this, come on. A lot of my friends had those, and I remember, I think I may have had a bracelet like this, but not a whole ass belt, so... And then this again, I don't... Oh, I think I know what that is. Okay, that's also iconic, because I, I actually used to have one, but it was like bright orange. So now is the time for something different. Oh, I bought two? Okay. Why? <gasps> Oh my god, they sent me one for free! Okay, I am so going to use both then. Let me explain. For those of you that are like nine years old, this is what you wear on your neck at all times. It, usually you wouldn't wrap it around, you would just like make a big triangle out of it and then do this and then do this. Oh my god, a lot of people are like, oh, sometimes when I dress up in historical costume, I feel like I'm time traveling. Honey, this is time travel. This is literally time travel right now. Oh, it's, it also makes me a little bit sad that they gave me one for free because that means not a lot of people buy them. And then I only have one thing left, which I hope turned out okay because it was custom made and it's pretty iconic, but I don't think it's like super 1920s and you will see why, but I think it will work really nicely as an accessory. I was actually thinking of making like a pendant of it or something but uh, I didn't know how to so instead I just ordered this and I'm gonna show you in a second when I find out how to open this I feel like I'm kind of living my dream right now you know like all of the things I, I wanted to do back then but I couldn't <sighs> Okay, um, so a disclaimer, I was not actually a fan of him, but a lot of my classmates were, so it was sort of like part of my identity, even though I, I wasn't actually a fan of the band, but... <laughs> My my emo scene dreams are coming true right now. Also, this wig is losing a lot of hair and it gets in my nose, which I don't think is super healthy. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me for this unboxing video. Anyway, back to work.
When it comes to the construction of the dress, I mean, who am I kidding? There was no pattern as always and I basically improvised the whole thing, basing it off the things that I already have. So I took a 20 style slip that I made like years ago and I used it to estimate the top and I cut the front and the back pieces and I originally planned to make bust darts but it turned out that they're not really necessary like no bust involved anyway <laughs> and for the skirt I didn't go for the pleats as the original design says because I tried it once in a 20 style dress and I just failed miserably so instead I just cut out two really long rectangles of fabric and just gathered it and made the skirt like and it, I mean the result is more like early 20s than 1927 but to be fair it's a mess timeline wise anyway so like who cares like I have a picture of Pete Wentz I don't think anyone one's gonna care about my skirt being anachronistic. I mean. Then I copied a collar from a shirt that I had and I binded it with the pink trimming and the collar is where things got a little messy sewing wise so I was like oh I'm just gonna cover the, the ugly piece with the Pete Wentz pin but it turned out it's so big it doesn't really work so like I just left it and it's just nasty. Then I just I, I don't know I cut out pieces of fabric that were more or less sleeve shaped and and then sewed them and they worked and then in the original original design I mean it's still my design but the skirt was supposed to be hemmed with the pink trimming but I thought it's gonna stiffen the hem a lot so I didn't do it and then I decided to leave it raw because I was like that kind of fits the aesthetic right or am I just being lazy <laughs> and then I got the last remaining pieces in the mail mainly the new shoelaces that were the perfect color and it even matched the pink trimming miraculously and then I went to the mall uh, to get a pair of appropriate tights and then uh, it was the time for the emo salon hi and welcome to emo salon I need to get rid of my lipstick first so I'll be right back okay now that that is more or less done let's move on to Contact lenses, that's the correct phrase, wow, okay. Yes, I have only painted nails on my one hand because I got bored and I just started doing something else. Next up we have sunscreen, which A, it's really sunny today, but B, it's also September, so it's not that hot. The sole reason I'm putting it on is because it makes my skin look a little bit pale and you know, emo makeup was all about this vampire look, so let's get it. By the way, I'm using my camera screen as my mirror so it's gonna be great. I have already something on my eyes and on my eyebrows because I left the house today and I wanted to look like a human being but it's subtle enough I think to not interfere with my emo tendencies today and also eyebrows are not gonna be seen anyway because like emos did not have eyebrows and if they did they were plucked Thin, which is not something I'm going to do so <laughs> my hair is nasty today because I was like it's gonna go under a wig so why why should I care get rid of the earrings while I remember so next up we have um, powder which is in a disastrous condition I mean I got this vintage powder case pow from a friend and it's lovely except it didn't have powder inside so I put it inside myself and for that I had to like crush the powder wet it with alcohol and then wait for it to dry and it worked splendid but then it all started breaking so like it's all a powdery mess inside like the mirror is nowhere to be seen anymore it's just it looks like a certain drug so if I was ever at an airport probably should not show them this <laughs> and also sometimes I get those like white um what is wrong with my English today? It's literally gone. No blush, because blush is inappropriate for this era. <laughs> okay, I lost my concealer, but just uh, keep in mind that I will put concealer over my lips at some point. Anyway, I bought this uh, black... It's not really a liner, is it? Because it's like a pencil, a black pencil that I'm desperately trying to open right now. Anyway, uh, how are you guys doing? Oh! There you go. According to my research, and like from what I remember, emo makeup wasn't like top notch. Like no offense, some people did it really well, but like most people didn't really care. Um, so in my case, like most of my friends would usually just put a lot of black pencil around their eyes and maybe some black eyeshadow. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I have some leftover liner, which I'm just gonna smudge and pretend it's supposed to look like that. Let's just leave it. So should I just like put it all over my eyelid because I remember the inner corner of your eye was pretty much black 
Oh, okay. The shape of my eye got screwed up. <laughs> I don't know how. Oh my god, that looks terrifying. But it also looks a bit, like, right? <laughs> it made my eyes so much smaller. I feel like a lot of people over 60 wear this look, at least in Poland. <laughs> how far should I go with it? Like, it should probably be, like, a panda look. So it should fill... I am very insecure about this. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna start filling it in. I vividly remember people's eyelids would just be like fully black. Uh, I walk down the memory lane for sure. Oh my god, okay. My apologies to anyone that actually was emo during that time or still is. Because this ain't right. Oh my god, it keeps getting worse and worse. Okay, um, might as well just move on to the eyeshadow because this stuff is not getting better. <laughs> Okay, the eyeshadow is helping a little bit, but I'm still gonna have to walk around in sunglasses when I leave the house because I don't want people to get a heart attack. Like, imagine someone walking up to you and being like... So, story time. Back when I was 14, my mom wouldn't allow me to use any makeup. I mean, good for her because at least I didn't get any pimples until I was like 17. And I really wanted to because I was like, you know what? That would be so cool if my mom allowed me to use like mascara. So what I did was I found this like transparent mascara, you know, that's, that was like literally a transparent gel. And I was like, mom, so I know I'm not allowed to use mascara, but this one is see-through. Like it literally does not show. So can I use it? And she was like, okay. Oh no, it just smudges all over my face. So me and my friend, we bought this mascara. Like I remember rocking it on my first day of school and I was like, hello there. Look at my eyelashes. They're all like wet. That is not black enough. I know there are all those memes about like Gen Z rocking their makeup like they're 45 and like us literally putting the worst it on our faces and feeling like goddesses but it was so much fun like there was no pressure to actually look good it was just about like discovering all those products and going like i'm such a grown-up <laughs> okay i look like a panda oh my god why is my face full of oh no <laughs> what happened why are all my fingers oh my god what did I do? Oh, I don't even know what to do. Jeez, okay. That is why you sometimes do your eyes first and then the rest of the face. This is how I was trying to be in like 2008. How the hell do I, should I just like use a sharpener for this? I thought my right eye looks like Ozzy Osbourne, which like depending how you look at it could be good or bad. Come on, what is wrong with you? Okay, this is not looking good. I am so lost. If any of you are actually experiencing this, please guide me in the comments. Just in case I ever have to do it again, because this ain't it. Like, I'm not even mentioning the fact that I utterly destroyed the pencil, but also I feel like I'm utterly destroying this look and like not in a good way, so. I feel like this is very much like Polo Negri meets Polo Boy. <laughs> I did not think I would say those two things in one sentence. Oh my god, I look so scary. Yeah, I think we'll just stop here because it's not getting any better. I miraculously found my concealer. Guess where? In my sister's room. Surprise. So what I'm going to do is, oh, mm, cover my lips with it just so I look a little bit more sickly than I already do. And then I also found her foundation, which I think I'm gonna use because my face is full of like black eyeshadow right now and it is not a good look even when it comes to this particular subculture. So just a little bit. I know I just used powder and like, sue me, but I'm just gonna even things out a little bit and then correct the eyeshadow thing. And also I know I used concealer before the foundation, but my rules. <laughs> and I might as well cover my eyebrows so they look a little bit more emo appropriate. I mean... <laughs> Oh my god, I look so scary. Like, I don't think um, emails are supposed to be like terrifying, but my witchy nose does not help. Okay, so hear me out. I got something really smart, I think. So you know how emos used to have those like two piercings right here? I bought these stickers and like, I'm going to attempt attaching them to my face and pretending it's actually piercings. What's the right size for this? I know they're probably not gonna stick too well because of all the foundation, but Oh, <laughs> okay. 
Oh my god, are these symmetrical? Hell yeah! Okay, next up, I have a wig. So I'm gonna have to put my hair a little bit more flat than this and then we'll, we'll try and put it on. Give me a second. So I changed into my slip as to not ruin the hair once I put it on. Funnily enough, it's like a crossover between Pete Wentz and a Karen. Like, I'm not even lying to you right now. Okay, you can laugh all you want, but like the cut is actually pretty good. Wait, where's the back of it? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Weirdly, it's kind of good. Like, see those little swirls? They're like really good for the 20s. Oh. I'm getting like massive, massive flashbacks right now to my classmates <laughs> back in 2007. Oh my god, that's insane. Oh my god, I am so happy with this wig. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, this is lit. This is lit. Let's move on. So I literally forgot like half of my accessories is hair related. So these bad boys, I'm not sure how they'll work with this hair length. Because like I don't really want to trim them, but this is not looking good. I'm gonna have to trim them because like they're too good for me to just leave them. Y'all need to go, bye. Oh. <laughs> some of the emo hair was like completely straight, right? Especially the streaks, but for some reason this bit here is like, it ain't it. What if I make it part of the bangs? Okay, wait for it. I'm gonna make it work. <gasps> oh my god, yes! Yes! That is precisely what I was looking for. Oh my god. I'm gonna get emotional. Oh my god, okay. Not gonna lie, this is like literally all of my middle school dreams come true. Why does it work so well? Okay, and then I have uh, these bad boys. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm literally gonna cry. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Like, what? Okay, let's move on, let's move on. I'll, I'll fix it before I leave the house. Please don't leave my room again You're the only thing that made me feel like this year It's still worth living I wish I didn't have to write a song About how everyone here hates me So I'll drown in my mistakes that I can't Not gonna lie, this look was honestly everything I wanted and more. Though getting to the shooting location was like a walk of shame. I don't think I was ever as embarrassed, wa embarrassed walking in a historical outfit as I was walking in that particular outfit. And it's not even because it was emo and that's uncool, but it was just the combination of like the current hair and then the 20s dress. Like it works for the video and it works as a walk down the memory lane. Um, I don't think I'm ever wearing that again. <laughs> 
And overall, I feel like I was maybe a bit overcome by nostalgia and it turned out way more 2007 than 1927. Uh, but also, I absolutely do not regret that and I think it was great. <laughs> so, uh, peace out. Bye!